Kia ora. Welcome to Breakfast with Rawiri Love. The question may be asked, what's the difference between a revival paradigm and what has now become a status quo paradigm? Depth. D-E-P-T-H. Depth. We have an illustration that underscores depth in Ezekiel, where a man is looking to go into a river. He starts at ankle deep. He then migrates to knee, could be waist, shoulders. Lastly, that figure of the man going into the water is overwhelmed. That's where we're going to. By the way, the man is no different to the church. We're going into increment levels of depth. The Bible says this, that we go from glory, one level of glory, to glory, to glory. Now, to each level of glory manifestation, there's got to be a renewal of the mind associated to accommodate that level. You get to another level and you've got to format the whole mindset of what we did know because he's doing a new thing. And then we get to another level. So if you are the, t the student that feels that we have to copy a previous, you're going to be outdated. And you could find yourself opposing today the very thing what God is doing. Why? Because you're looking at that model and you're saying that's got to be the model today. Who said it has to be? There will be obviously similar laws of this level that could be said is true of this level. And I'll tell you what that can be outlandishness. You see, when the man went into the river and he found himself getting overwhelmed, but that was it. He was, he was being totally overwhelmed by the level of manifestation. It can get like that. Because we're entering into a new move of God, I mean, thank you, Jesus. You may say, well, okay, why all this outlandishness? Why doesn't God do things according to our paradigm? Well, why should he? When you think about it, his dimension is totally different from ours. His paradigm of thinking differs. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. His ways are not like our ways. So why should God fit into your natural paradigm? when he doesn't exist in this natural world. It's like this. I okay. have one of these power points behind me. They've got what, 240 volts at the max. So you plug in, you get 240 volts of power coming through. Woo! Now, times that by 10. <laughs> Hypothetical. Heavens voltage system, it's a whole different paradigm. You plug into that and whoa, suddenly what was 240 becomes 2,400 volts. That's the difference. His whole paradigm differs. But I'm going to say this to you. The law of the glory is the law of transformation. My whole scope of ministry today totally differs largely because I understand him from the paradigm of his glory. Moses understood the ways of God. The Moses that went up the mountain was not the same Moses that came down from the mountain. The Moses that came down from the mountain had an encounter with Iwatu, a God of Abraham. 
The Moses that came down from the mountain came down after having seen God's goodness, the manifestation of his glory. And by the way, Moses not only saw the paradigm of glory for his time, he saw our time. But this is what Moses knew. When he saw the glory of God manifest, he knew in himself that he dwelt amongst a rebellious people. This happened with Isaiah. He sees the glory of God and he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. Immediately he understood the deficiency of the realm he lived, of the company he kept, all that sort of thing. This is what the glory of God does. It gives you a change of worldview. It changes your whole scope on things. Do you know, I'm so boring. I don't even have time for things that most people do. I don't watch TV, don't go to movies. I don't do any of those sort of things because I have been so caught up in his glory now, I've learned to live in it, that my interest levels have changed. Now, I'll throw this in, no extra cost. When we were at a move of God here, I mean, thank you, Jesus. There was what is called an ideology that goes with that move. Yeah, a certain mindset. And it went with that move. When we came into this level of glory manifestation, there was once again an ideology that went with that move. And then we came into this move. But this is what Iwatua said in Isaiah 43, 8 and 9. He said, remember ye not the former. Remember ye not the former. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? So sometimes the ideology of yesterday sabotages what he wants to do today. I love this stuff. Why is it that a lot of people are happy with status quo? Because at ankle deep, you can be control of your own life. At knee deep, you can be in control of a lot of your decisions. The deeper you go, you become liquidated. And he starts to take over and takes precedence in your life. And then you get this little key, which is a big key. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All that starts to take place. It starts off broad, but it becomes narrow. Your options get narrowed down as you go more into them. But this is what I found. The less of you, the more of him, the more of identification you find in who you are. You don't know who you are until you know him. You see, as you know him, then you know you. But you can't know you unless you know him. So in knowing him, you start to know you. I'm comfortable in who I am in him. I'm comfortable in who he made me to be. And I'm comfortable to find out that the entire course of my life, it's already been decided. I'm comfortable to know that he knows better than I do. So all I have to do is fit into his paradigm. Can you see what glory does now? Glory brings transformation. And by the way, it's not goofy for the goofy's sake. It's goofy for righteousness sake. Yes, there's a part of goofiness. There are times when the glory of God comes upon me and I'm, I'm just like a <laughs> <laughs> drunk it in the Holy Ghost, you know, I mean, I'm wasted. It can be li literally like that, my eyes go glassy. Sometimes my wife walks into the office, she walks out straight away because she can see where I am. I'm not even in that office. I'm with him. But you know what I mean. We need more of him and less of us. So how does that fit into the paradigm of today? Because we've got to have... It's got to be pragmatic, very easy. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. You hear what I'm saying? To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh 
to you to get a touch. That's what you need. Those of my listeners today, you need a touch from him. And that's why I'm at my breakfast table. And his presence has been manifest for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, now's the time. If you don't know what it's like to be romantic with him, now's the time. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sins. The gap between you and him has been bridged because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus died for you. He took your position. Now he's absorbed all those sinful actions that's why we need his glory we need a manifestation of God out of bandwidth that's never been seen we need to be open to the outlandish we need to be open to the spectacular we need to be open to the wonders I know, I'm a wonder to most people so they can't figure me out. I come under a lot of controversy. I have to love those who misunderstand me. And that's all right. The bar has to be set at such a height that we walk in forgiveness. So that's why we need revival to get a touch from the Lord is so real to get a touch from the Lord is so real if you draw nigh to him he will draw nigh to you to get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Is coming again you'll feel the bandwidth of his goodness coming through you'll sense his goodness to get a touch from the Lord is so real to get a touch from the Lord is so real if you draw nigh to him he will draw nigh to you to get a touch from the Lord is so real Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Be his goodness. Come to my meetings. Preacher, this is what you need in your meeting. Don't be just a franchise of some other man's system. 
be a franchise of his glory. To get a touch from the Lord So real To get a touch from Enjoy His presence I'm at your conscience We live in a beautiful glory hour. We live in a time that we have to see the fulfillment of many promises. This is what it's like to be in the river when it's overwhelming. His glory Enjoy. Share this with everyone. Play it to the unbeliever. Let them sense his goodness. Come deeper, please. Come deeper. It's important. The depth is comparable to the relationship. The depth is comparable to the intimacy. Somebody said to me the other day, God bless your heart. She asked me about the area of forgiveness, or not forgiveness, obedience. She said, we just have to obey him, don't we? And I said, obedience starts in the requisite of tenderness. When you are tender before him, you obey. To get a touch from the Lord is so real to get a touch from the Lord is so real if you draw nigh to him he will draw nigh Be blessed. If you want me to minister, contact me. What you feel here on the camera, it'll come to your congregation, it'll come to your area. Will be a blessing. Be open to the outlandish because it's going to happen. 
But the beauty is, you're going to get a touch from the Lord. Invite the most resistant of individuals to my meetings. Bring them. The sinner I poured in. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to you. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Is coming again. Let the glory of God be manifest. I speak a blessing into every home and to every congregation that is watching me. I speak a blessing to the one who is watching me in private just on their cell phone. I pray for those ones that have infirmity of the psyche, need healing in the realm of the memory banks that are holding them ransom to the past. I speak healing. I speak healing by the name of Jesus Christ into every genetic mutation. I prophesy into that area to be healed. I lay hands today on those ones that are watching me. I lay hands on each one. I speak a Father's blessing. I esteem those who are least esteemed and I encourage Means masculinity, I speak into that area now. I prophesy into that area. If we can strengthen the area of the masculinity of men in Jesus Christ, we can alter our community. I speak into there. I speak into woman folk right across the board. Young ladies, mums, nans. I thank you, Lord, for the blessing at this time. I speak to the teenagers to rise up. And I speak to the children. I speak to the excited minds of young people. And I speak restoration because of the river of the glory. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to you to get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming, is coming again. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nora ira. Tina kote. Tina kote. Kiora kote kato. That the Lord's blessing remain upon you. Very, very strong here. I'm trying to have breakfast. <laughs> it ruined my breakfast. <laughs> have another drink. <laughs> mm, pull it in. <laughs> this is what the stuff does. It's pure. It's holy. It's righteous. Play this a thousand times. When you, hey, when you're bored, play me. <laughs> <laughs> when you need a laugh, play me. <laughs> when you can't make it to church, play me. <laughs> serious <laughs> because my critics are going to say see we told you <laughs> look at him he's a paralytic to the Holy Ghost we told you he's, he's off <laughs> oh shut up <laughs> Ooh, don't come to my meetings <laughs> <laughs> okay, get your posture together. <laughs> Have another drink. <laughs> What's in this stuff? Hey, <laughs> if you come to my meetings, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, well, what can you say? <laughs> blessing what a privilege it is to serve him and such a unique hour what a privilege to be able to serve him such an anointed hour What a privilege to be able to have been taken out of the world in my lost condition to become an ambassador of his glory. That's what he called me. He said, you are a glory ambassador. That's why Get lost in him, and you find yourself. Kika, I better let you go. <laughs> you gotta go and you gotta go and iron the clothes. You gotta go and vacuum the house. You gotta go to work. Go and make some money and give me an offering. <laughs> uh, okay, God bless you. Kaki, dear.